ga se tu ta pa ki dalim ga se mu e tu da ki kuma ke mu bo In the Bangladesh hamlet of Panchbaria, 20 miles west of the capital of Dhaka, Dr. Tariqul Islam stops by to talk with members of the Kandokar family, many of whom suffer from the effects of arsenic poisoning. They are among tens of millions in Bangladesh being slowly poisoned by naturally occurring arsenic in their drinking water. Tariqul heads a nearby health clinic that was set up by Columbia University to help study arsenic's effects. A woman named Nasima, wife of the family's headman, says 27 members of her extended family have health issues that could be related to arsenic. Four have died from cancers and all had signs of arsenic poisoning. Nasima's brother-in-law, Farouk, shows dark spots on his chest that are the markings of arsenicosis. His wife has been diagnosed with lung cancer. Another relative displays lesions on his hand, also a sign of poisoning. As many as one in five deaths in Bangladesh have been attributed to problems connected to arsenic poisoning. 61 districts have been, tubules, water have been affected by arsenic contamination out of 64 districts. So if you consider the size of the population exposed to arsenic is very high than any other country in the world. So it has got big public health impact. Almost 80 million, near to 80 million people are affected in the country. The problem lies mostly in shallow tube wells dug decades ago to provide people with germ-free water. But now many of those wells have been found to be contaminated with arsenic. For nearly two decades now, researchers from Columbia University have been coming to Bangladesh to see how they could help. In the field, scientists from Columbia's Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory, the University of Dhaka and other institutions have teamed up to dig into what's beneath the flat green landscape of rural Bangladesh to find out how the contamination occurs and what can be done about it. They test wells to track the movement of the arsenic, study the bacteria that may be releasing arsenic from the sediments into the water underground, and work with farmers to reduce arsenic contamination in the rice crop from irrigation water. With the urging of Habibul Hassan, a Bangladesh native and a graduate student at Columbia, researchers from the Mailman School of Public Health also got involved. In 2003, they established a clinic in the subdistrict of Araihazar as a base for an ongoing, long-term study of arsenic's impact on people's health. The clinic is now operated by the University of Chicago under Dr. Hassan. Some 35,000 people are enrolled in the long-term health study. More than a decade of that research has led to key findings linking arsenic exposure to cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, cancers, respiratory problems, and diabetes. We knew that arsenic was a carcinogen, lung, liver, bladder, skin cancer. There had been a hint in the literature about arsenic being associated with heart disease. But the surprise finding, to my mind, um, with regard to the, the large cohort study in adults, is that it appears to be the number one killer in association with arsenic exposure. We focused in the beginning on children, and we've learned that, like lead, arsenic uh, is associated with cognitive deficits in children. We, we studied 10-year-olds and 6-year-olds. Researchers today are testing 780 adolescents for possible effects on memory, planning abilities, and pulmonary function. The Araihazar Clinic has evolved into a four-building complex that diagnoses and helps treat people who've been exposed to arsenic. It also provides basic health services, including maternity care, dental care, and eye exams. The clinic employs 125 people and has accumulated an arsenal of diagnostic tools, X-ray, EKG, and ultrasound machines, and sophisticated equipment to test blood and take DNA samples. A dispensary hands out medicines at half price. Biological samples, levels of arsenic exposure, 
basic health data from blood pressure to causes of death all contribute to the research. Every 18 to 24 months, workers from the clinic fan out to survey families involved in the main long-term study and update their health conditions. We are going for asking them uh, various types of variables here, especially uh, socioeconomic condition, physical activity level, past history of diseases, especially chronic diseases, uh, and some uh, present uh, current uh, symptoms. When someone dies, clinic workers visit the home to interview the next of kin about the circumstances. In rural Bangladesh, 80% of deaths occur at home with no medical attention, so these verbal autopsies contribute valuable data about chronic diseases and the long-term effects of arsenic poisoning. Researchers have tested and labeled more than 50,000 wells around Arai Hazar. Most were contaminated, many with up to 50 times the level of arsenic considered safe by the World Health Organization. Across Bangladesh, the government and private agencies have replaced many of the contaminated wells with deeper wells that reach clean water. But continuing studies show many are still being poisoned, due in part to scant resources, poor information at local levels, and the sheer numbers of people in wells involved. New wells are constantly being dug and may not be tested. Labels placed on tested wells, color-coded to mark whether they're safe, fade out or fall off. The Arai Hazar Clinic operates an ongoing public education program to teach villagers about the dangers of arsenic, the importance of testing, and how to recognize symptoms of arsenic exposure. An additional program in public schools teaches youngsters about avoiding arsenic in drinking water. Very clearly, children who got education in elementary school, their arsenic came down to a greater extent than those who didn't, even though everybody had access to, to good water. And what's fascinating is you educate a child in fifth grade, the child's urine arsenic comes down. That means the message went up to mom, because mom is the one who actually goes and fetches the water and brings it into the home. So, so education in, in grade school is impacting presumably the whole family because the water source has been, been improved. The Kandokar family now drinks from a deeper, clean well donated by Columbia. Some 50 families in the area also use the well, but Nasima pays for the upkeep because, she says, she knows the value of maintaining a clean source of water. Uh, long term, the government has to do more but they certainly get the message about the, the importance of providing um, deep well uh, water on a broad scale. Uh, but the reality is Bangladesh is a country faced with many, many difficulties. And if you look at the list, uh, of course, arsenic is not the first priority. But progress has been made. Am I totally pleased? No. Um, this is the nature of the beast in public health. It's, uh, it's often a slow grind to get from point A to point B.